All right. All right, we are back again. Um, okay, had a little bit of a technical glitch there. Let's see if we can get this thing running again. And if we, uh, Eric was on, and see if he can uh, jump back out here uh, real quick. All right, let me see where should we get a little, uh, we're going to continue this discussion. All right, here we go. <laughs> so this is the fun of doing a live podcast, right? Uh, so you get to see the real deal. <laughs> so uh, we're going to try to get Eric back on the show. <laughs> there we go. Uh, you still there? You bet. All right, yeah. <laughs> damn technology i know i know i know it's gonna be horrible but i thought hey that's right we don't uh, right now i don't see a, a current listener and i thought well hey we <laughs> we can <laughs> i must have hit the wrong button i thought well starting it again it's like well, i can splice that together of course now that i'm saying no, that you people, sound better though do i sound better yeah, whatever you change you sound a lot yeah you sound a lot better yeah it, it turns out if you try to you can't continue the podcast on a different device. It just ends the show. Yeah. Yeah. So if you switch over yeah. from that to a phone, and you try, you think that, you know, you could be on the same, your same account and it would continue. Right. And I was trying to find that now. And it did, I tried to change the settings on my microphone on my laptop. And, uh, uh apparently it didn't like that. So no, no, you you sound a lot better though. Oh, okay. So okay, thank you. well, that's that's yeah. Remember. Getting back to what we were talking about, I know we had kind of an open discussion. I don't want to go too too far on a tangent regarding like food and, and what's good for us and all that. But it's um, it, you know, just from your business and transportation, you know how expensive things have gotten, uh, and it's a reflection on our food and our products and stuff, and uh, you know, probably right down to TVs and and everything else, but. Oh yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's. Uh, I think we've all gotten to a point that we have to reevaluate. You know, kind of what's important in our life, and and money's always important. You know, you got to save money, and you can't go out spending ten dollars on a on a sandwich all the time, right? Oh, I know. So you got to be you got to be a little bit more creative on on how we eat and when we eat and how much we eat and yeah. and um, that's some of the things that I have to do. Um, being with my mom and all that, you know, it's, uh, oh, yeah. you know, I, the funny thing is, is like, you know, I, I, I shop a lot in, in, in downtown Plymouth where, where I live and in time, I know you're, you're pretty familiar with it, but, um, sometimes yeah, it's, it's, been a it's while, easier, though. like, yeah, I'm going to send you some, uh, some pictures of, of the subdivision. It hasn't changed much, but I'll send you some pictures of some stuff, um, to kind of, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That'd to, be great. To, as, as a, a, to help you remember what, what everything looks like. But, I definitely want to visit um, too. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully in the next, uh, you know, a couple few months or whatever, or something, you know, that would be great. Either I can get away or you can get away or whatever, but, oh, yeah, um, yeah. but you know, it's like back in the day it was, um, you know, it, it wasn't all that expensive to eat out, you know, and the quality of food was, was actually, was actually decent, but, it just seems like the quality of food has diminished and it's gotten more expensive. And I'll, I'll tell you this, a uh, short story. My, it was a Sunday and my mom um, was like, man, I could really use a hamburger. She, my mom loves hamburgers. And I, I really didn't want to go to like a, a bar or somewhere or a carry out. And I'm like, where can I go to, to order, you know, a, a hamburger that would be quick and, and actually, you know, somewhat whatever, you know, uh, tasty, so to speak. And I went to Wendy's and I went to Wendy's on Ann Arbor road and, um, I ordered two oh, yeah. cheeseburgers and two small fries. It was $17. Wait. And I told the guy, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Wait, 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 wait. what was that? Like, the guy's like, yeah, 17 bucks for the two, Yeah, 17 bucks for two singles with cheese and two small fries. Seventeen dollars. Yeah, you could yeah. back in the day, not too long ago, you could get two meals for probably twelve bucks or thirteen bucks. Yeah, yeah. Where it was like the burger, the fries, and and um, a pop. And now I've I've got two burgers and two fries. Yeah, it's insane. Isn't like seven, it? It's like sixteen eighty. Yeah, and they're creeping it's up. Like they're, in, in my hope. Yeah, they're creeping up to the price. Yeah, my hope. Doing. My whole point was. 
yeah, it, they're robbing us, you know, and people that are addicted to this stuff. And getting back to McDonald's, listen to this. And this is old. This is kind of old news. But again, this was something that I, I read in the past. They said that, I think it was, and, and don't quote me on any of this, but I'm, I'm just kind of going, it's an article I read a long time ago. They said 60% of the people that go to, maybe it was 60 or 40, but nevertheless, call it 50%. 50% of the people that go to McDonald's go there three times a day or up to three times a day. Wow. Six. And like, yeah, 20 or 30% of them go at least once a day. That's how addictive McDonald's is. Jeez. So when you're, when you're talking about. So that's a, yeah, a McDonald's percentage of. Or Taco Bell or. Yeah. So that's out of how, yeah, how, out about, of the people who actually, uh, people who go there. You know, it's not 60% of the people, I see what you're saying, 60% of the people who shop at McDonald's, they like to go yeah. there like three times a a day out of their, yeah. oh my God. Those are people that are addicted to McDonald's and you, you have to ask yourself, why does somebody want to go to McDonald's that much? And, you know, back in the day, it's like, you know, like when we were growing up, if you had one person in an entire classroom that was call it heavy set, that was kind of a big deal. You know, it's like, oh, you know, yeah. so-and-so Wasn't is a bigger it? guy, whatever. But it's like now half of America is kind of borderline obese. And they're like, well, you know, people's attitudes are like, well, then don't go to McDonald's or don't drink so much pop or don't have so many sweets or maybe it's because you don't exercise. It's baloney. It's all, it's the food that we're being served at, these places, yeah, it's a, and we don't it's, understand how addictive they really are. Yeah, the choices that are Taco being made. Bell, it's McDonald's, it's, it's all these places. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that, and and that isn't really a tangent because that that's a business that affects our lives. I mean, think about, yeah. uh, I mean, how powerful it is the, the businesses that serve us food, and how ironic it is, isn't it? Uh, if that's the correct term to use uh, for. You know, the, the idea that, uh, uh, what used to be free in nature <laughs> is now, you know, like, yeah. uh, like actual healthy raw foods is now more expensive to deal with than to go to McDonald's. Like, uh, imagine, uh, especially, well, especially before the pandemic and McDonald's, uh, you could get what, what they had. Remember the dollar menu? It lasted for a long time. I think the pandemic yeah. started to change some of the dollar menus, but when that goes away, they may get back down to that or they might just keep it where it at, where it's at, depending on what the economy does, you know what I mean? With inflation and all that, but it was like 99 cents and you could get, what was it? A double cheeseburger for a while there. I think I think yeah. was it ninety nine cents for the double cheese? I think it was you, a you double. You get like a double cheeseburger and fries and a pop for like four or five bucks. Yeah, and it's you like know? if you it, were, it was it, relatively cheap. Yeah, when I when I was uh, going through the single parent phase with uh, with my daughters when they were younger, I didn't want to feed them that garbage. But when I was trying to survive and uh, trying to pay for daycare and all that kind of stuff, it's like that was it. it, it the cost was attractive, but. I knew I didn't want to feed it to him, so I, would, I had to try to find ways around it. But when we were in a jam somewhere and, and we were just uh, driving, say, and he need to get some food fast, and you think, wow, yeah. wow, for $3, each one of us gets a, a double cheeseburger. And that's, for a kid, that's way, it's a, for like a four-year-old, that's a lot of food. And you think, wow, yeah, so yeah. it's better than not having food at all. And, and what a shame it is, you know. So, so uh, because of that, I had to learn. I had, to, I had to, you know, learn from my mom and say, hey, since I have to take care of these, these little girls myself, I got to learn how to cook basic stuff because I want to eat healthy too. Because I mean, my girls, yeah. they, they, they <laughs> not with their age, they're grown, right? Okay. So they, but I'll bet you if I ask them right now that I bet you they don't like rotisserie chicken that much because they had so okay. much rotisserie chicken. <laughs> <laughs> because hey, you, when you look when at, I, when, when you look keto, at, oh, when you look at protein, I mean, just real quick, say with protein, that was the thing. Eggs were beautiful, but they did like, they liked eggs, but not that much. But for dinner, I'm like, hey, it was the best. If you didn't want to go to McDonald's, I could go to the grocery store, go pick up a rotisserie chicken. Back then, remember, it was like five ninety nine. You get, a, you get right, a nice, right. I mean, for one one adult and two little kids, that rotisserie chicken yeah. is going to last, especially two little girls. It's like, wow, there's 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 a few days worth of food, and you got real protein. Yeah. And, and so they're just, they were so sick of rotisserie chicken. 
this well, you know, it's funny is like I, I can I kind of parlay what what you're talking about and you know with my mom having dementia and me taking care of her and and trying to you know minimize costs and stuff. You know what I've realized is that I can I can make pasta, I can make brown rice with vegetables. I buy these cauliflower based pizzas. They're like the the crust is cauliflower based. Yeah, but it's a real simple pizza. Um, it's thin crust, but there's only 350 calories per half a pizza. So what I do is I buy these cauliflower based um, pizzas, the crust that is. And I doctor them all up. I put red onion on them. I put more red pepper on them. I put more cheese on them, you know, hot pepper seeds. And I doctor them all up. My mom and I eat these things. And it's really five bucks a piece. Oh, wow. And, you know, and like I said, when I went to Wendy's at one time, I spent 17 almost $17 on two burgers with cheese and two small fries. It was 17 bucks. But you guys are crazy. Yeah. These are two burgers and two small fries, it costs, it can't cost that much to make them. It can't. Oh, I know, I know. And you, you think, know? And, and think about it. Have you ever had the urge to go to like a Kentucky Fried Chicken lately? And then you turn around once you see the price. You know, once <laughs> yeah. you're like, I want to get a bucket I, of chicken. And you're like, what? Wait a minute. For the same amount of money I spend there, I could go get the fried chicken at the grocery store and get an eight piece, an eight piece, eight pieces of chicken at the grocery store. Literally, the local grocery store now, you know, and, yeah. and you get it for what? Well, like eight bucks now. It used to right. be like six ninety nine. Now it's like it's kind of creeping up too. But it's I think lately I paid like like seven ninety nine or something like that. And it's yeah. not it's not KFC, but it's like a step down. See, I mean, I went That's, to a I went to a food city before uh, here in Tennessee, and I guess it depends who's cooking. But their chicken was it was just one of them, one of the food city grocery stores. And right. uh, a friend of mine said, "You got to try their 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 this one down here, uh, at a certain location." I said, "That that one is actually pretty good." It was on Asheville Highway here in Knoxville. And I said, "Try that one." Well, back then it was a few years ago. Oh my God, it was almost as good as KFC. Not quite. Like whoever was cooking right. it did whatever recipe they're using, and the quality was just literally just a step under. You know, a couple of years later, they may have a private different people cooking. It's not quite. It's like two steps below. But for the price, right, right. You know, the coating is the only thing that wasn't. The chicken itself was just as, just as good as KFC, yeah, pretty yeah. much. So yeah, that that shock. I mean, I'll get that urge every once in a while. Just like I want to get it. Oh yeah, let's get a bucket of. Oh yeah, get some KFC. You see that price? This and, is, this is the crazy thing. Is like okay, you're a perfect example, right? You're on the road. You're you transport cross country and. You don't want to stop all the time if you don't have to, but you probably do, right? When you have to, you stop and grab something to eat. And let's say if you and your wife prepared like um, four meals at a time, right? So you had like salads and chicken and whatever is good for you, blah, blah, blah. And I think you and I had a conversation about, you know, preparing meals and stuff. So it keeps you out of like, you know, uh, buying the stuff on the, on the road and stuff. But there's, there's, there's some kind of, What's the word? It's, there's a there's a, a draw to eating fast food. Like when you're driving on the road, let's say you've got all this stuff set up in your cooler, your refrigerator, yeah, and you there pass is. a KFC or you pass like uh, a local barbecue shop or something. Oh. It draws you in. It's it really draws bad. You like really bad for yeah. trucking. For trucking, and, it really is because you just yeah, you just want to stop and go grab that's the food. My and eat. point is like a, a hundred years ago. I don't think we ever did that. Like fast food became really big in the fifties and sixties. That's when it started ramping up because the highways were put in, people were traveling, they wanted to pull over and grab something to eat. But the, the problem is, is that the food companies realized that and they make it, they made it really addictive. So they added all these additives and stuff to make you addicted to the foods. It drives up your insulin. And then when you're, you know, whatever the science is behind it, Oh yeah, and they say um, the the kinds of the actual combination of different ingredients they found, like uh, like sugar with the 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 fat, sugar and, and the salt. protein, yeah, yeah and and and, you, and the fat together, it causes something. It causes you to retain more of the super fat. Spikes. Yeah, and the crazy thing is, is like if you drink like pop, right? And pop, um, let's say anybody drinks pop, um, if you take one thing out, meaning salt or sugar, because those are the two main two main ingredients. If you take out the sugar in pop, pop is going to taste like salt. 
But if you take the salt out, it's going to primarily taste like sugar. But both of those together creates like, um, it, you know, I, I don't really know the science behind it, but um, it creates that addiction. It yeah, they're, 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 they're going for the, uh, uh, the, the primal, you know, what, what are your cells truly craving? You know? Exactly. Exactly. And, and it's like, we're, we're meant to we're all, yeah, we're meant to crave right. that stuff. We're meant to crave it. Yeah. And, but, yeah. but nature kind of puts a limit on how much of it we could get. You know, you get full by the time you eat so much salad, you eat how many apples you can eat, you know, with all the fiber yeah. in there. But then, yeah, with their ability to just target, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, say, certain drugs, like uh, cocaine, from what I've yeah. heard. Um, I, I, I may be wrong on this, but from I remember. What you heard, of course. Yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, no, literally, I've never. I, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I mean, I remember reading something about the coca leaves, uh, the idea that um, something about that, that the, the, you know, uh, what they make cocaine out of, in other words, is they, they refine yeah. it. It's kind of like refined sugar. They refine it out, but there, there are other chemicals in other, other elements, I should say, should maybe they're chemicals, whatever, you know, nutrients or whatever that are in the plant and the amount of whatever it is that makes you feel speeded up, you know, let's say cocaine is very yeah. minor. So people just chew on the leaves, but everything yep. in it, it has kind of like a caffeine effect, they say, but it's so yeah. balanced out and it's so minimal. There's not, a, there's not really that much of an addiction to it, but they pull it out. They just focus on whatever it is that, that they make it with. Cause I don't, you know, like I really don't know much about that, but it, they focus on that. They extract that all out, take out all the other uh, balancing ingredients that nature has in there. And now you've right. got this, uh, now you've got this concentrated element that gets people addicted. And, you know, it, it's a, obviously we know how addictive cocaine is, but it's sugar. Same thing. Yeah. Balance sugar. Yeah. They pull up, pull everything up hard and nature has a good balance to it. So I just can't imagine why now with all our technology, uh, I can see why, you know, how they can make more money. They can make it taste better. They're trying to compete with other businesses like, ooh, ours tastes better than that person's, you know, that they're, they're, our burgers are, you know, and, but they're trying to go to the point of like, like you're saying addiction, but it's like, aren't, aren't there ways to make a business and serve food that is still natural and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg? Now, I bet you someone who's in the food industry uh, would say that's pretty difficult because you got spoilage and you got, you know, but there must be some kind of food item uh, somewhere that doesn't not, you know, like hot dogs. You, you get a hot dog cart, those things can last, but look at all the preservatives and, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, hot dog garbage. Yeah. So, I mean, could you have a natural hot dog that's not full of all that, which could still be as profitable? You know, yeah, I mean, whole, this is the whole thing. It's like, it's all based people like, oh, it's, it's calories, it's sugar, it's this, it's that, but it's based on our insulin levels. So people are like, well, bread's not that bad for you. It is. Bread's one of the worst things for you. And people don't know that because they don't talk about it. But once you dig into how bad bread is for you, bread super spikes our insulin. And that's what causes diabetes. If you look at how many fast food places are based on bread. It's incredible. Subway, burger joints, Chipotle, all that. It's all based on bread. It's all based on, and people are like, oh, I'm getting a wrap. I'm getting a, a, a wrap from Chipotle. It can't be that bad. Just a wrap. Well, there's still, you know, probably 20, 30, 40 carbohydrates that go into a wrap and that super spikes our insulin. And it drives our insulin way up. And once you drive our insulin way up, it, 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 your body creates glucose. And when your body creates glucose, if it can't use the glucose, it stores it. And when it gets stored, it gets stored as fat. So like when you get into like keto, uh, ketogenic diets and all that kind of stuff, it's not really a diet, but it's the way we're supposed to eat because when you're eating raw foods like vegetables, nuts, and some fruits and, and some various like, you know, beef and chicken and whatever and, and fish, all those don't drive up our insulin levels. It's the breads. It's all the processed foods that drive up our insulin levels. Yeah, yeah you know, I talked to... It's crazy. Uh, That's what creates the diabetes. Yeah, one uh, uh, one partner of mine, he's a chef, and he mentioned, I think it was yeast he mentioned, when you get those really soft breads. I, I don't, yeah. Is it yeast, I think, he mentioned? I can't, I'll have to ask him again, but something about he, he doesn't like to touch fast food either because of the bread. 
He says yeah. he avoids it, and and he just thinned right down, and he became a lot, lot healthier, just avoiding all the fast food breads. Uh, and he warned me about that too. He said, yeah, you're driving a truck and you're, uh, cause I was able to stop by and, and visit him. Uh, he's up in, uh, uh, well, I'm in, I'm say up, you know, up in Ohio for you, that would be down in Ohio. Uh, but, right, and, right. uh, <laughs> I stopped at his restaurant. He's got an Italian restaurant, uh, really, really good food and, uh, made really well and simple. And, um, so he's got a, a nice, nice business. So you know, when you relate that to business, there is a way to have good food without a bunch of crap. But yeah. I, you, know, you know, when you come, like you're mentioning the fast food and trying to relate all this to business, look how powerfully all of these businesses affect our lives. And yeah, and and, yeah. and it should be outlawed or like some countries actually outlawed. I noticed the hamburgers are different in China. Oh, oddly enough, it's like I, I, they weren't as greasy. And uh, yeah, I hear in Europe they have certain things banned that you you, you can eat here, but like well, like a, what is it the um, what's the corn syrup one the um, high, oh, high fructose corn syrup? Yeah, that's it. I think that's banned uh, in some European countries. Yeah, uh, and, there's uh, a story. There's a hold on. There's a documentary about high fructose corn syrup, and it has something to do with Donald Rumsfeld, which was. Um, uh, he was a, uh, I forgot his, uh, his exact uh, position with the Bush administration, but Donald Rumsfeld was on, he was one of the chairmen on the FDA. And back in the day, years and years ago, they made high fructose corn syrup illegal. And he, and it, cause it was voted on, um, in the United States. Um, and it was a panel of like, I don't know if it was three people or five people, and they they outlawed it. They said high fructose high fructose corn syrup um, was too detrimental to our health. Therefore, we're not going to have it. Well, he increased the panel to get the high fructose corn syrup legalized in in the United States, and that's what's in our ketchup. That's what's in our you know our oh soda, yeah our yeah pops, yeah all that stuff. I have he is one of the direct people that are responsible for what we eat today. And he's, you know, Rumsfeld is, I I hate to say, I don't know how he, he, you know, especially with like the Bush administration, he was one of the ones that was um, promoting the Iraq war. And, you know, he, I don't know. I don't want to say he's a bad yeah, person. Yeah, I just but. think if we're, if we're getting it, like, it's like special interest. That's the, you know, when you think of all this, it's like, what was the motive for, for making sure that money. the, yeah, money, yeah. money, money, and why the money? The 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 high fructose corn syrup. What is it about it? Is there something when it comes to food processing that the were there donors to his campaign um, that he owed favors to that were saying, "Hey, we need to get this legalized. This will this will you know, you know, for the level of uh, of how much they're selling." To be able to use a change one ingredient could be millions and millions of dollars, and yeah. The, so exactly. you wonder if they're just like, say, "Hey, we're we're saving." It could be billions. <laughs> sounds like sounds like somebody's uh, <laughs> uh pouring out a glass of water. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm in the sink. <laughs> it, it almost sounded like someone going to the bathroom there and said, "Hey, wait, what, no, what's going no. on?" There? But no, I wanted to, I wanted to mention is uh, is that's that's one thing when it comes to politics affecting business. That's a powerful thing right there. When it comes to business, is yeah. okay, okay. You know, a board of directors for a business. Now, is it really a bad thing? No, you got, it, it allows people to have a, it allows a, a large institution to exist with people who have wisdom and experience to, to manage it, you know, from a top level down. I mean, you kind of have to have that top level down in a way, unless somebody comes up with something creative, uh, you know, you can't just have a bunch of people running around figuring, like, let's just, what are we going to do today? You know, Let, let's make something right, up. Right. You know, so it, it has to have an organization to a business. There has to be a structure. And so, it's not like we, you know, do we really need to reinvent the wheel? But how about tweaking, tweaking the the the, the system, or kind of seeing, hey, where's it going off the rails where it actually affects our lives, you know, in society? So, and, and one of them, it's the, tell me if you think about the, if, if you agree uh, on the idea that sometimes when a business gets to a certain point, a certain size, say when when it's being managed by a board of directors or, you, you know, basically uh, when they go public and the, the price of the stock seems to matter more. So say, right. say, for example, you'll have a company that will start with a great idea. They'll, they'll have a great service or a great product. 
and they they want to make it great so because they're solving a problem right and uh uh it, it it turns out great you know they 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 launch it people love it you know they they start building and building the company because the fans just love it they they have repeat customers because they're really catering towards the customer and now all of a sudden they're making enough money they're getting to a certain size and now they need to incorporate say for example and now they're still, now they've gone public say uh and uh they they're selling stock and now they're run by a board of directors who are beholden to the stockholders especially the majority stockholders and now those stockholders are saying hey uh we we you know for us you know they're saying it's about our money it's about our stock price now it's about the stock price and not about the product so right, it used right, to be exactly. so that, and it's, it doesn't seem like that's the same old story you've got the founder or the founders they had great ideas they get going uh they build it up and eventually when it makes enough money uh now it becomes about the price of the stock and that's when the motives change yeah. I mean, look at Apple. Yeah, exactly. Apple right now. Apple. I mean, that's a good example. They might be still rocking and rolling because they're strong, and uh, there was a, a, a nice uh, trend there. But I mean, Steve Jobs. I, I don't think he was liked by a lot of people, but he 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 did push forward. You know, maybe he wasn't the. the he maybe he didn't do it in a very diplomatic way, and maybe you know that that. But that's his own personal life, and you know personal style that people can agree with or disagree with. And maybe he could have done it in a nicer way, but he was passionate about, you know, the, how the, how the product was. And they, they, as a team, not just he, him, but they, the whole Apple company, they created that following and has, yeah. you know, what now that he's gone, I mean, he, he probably had to be that kind of a crazy, you know, angry kind of guy and just, just right. bull headed to just take on all of the, uh, uh, you know, the, they say those who are uh, managing the stock price, basically, who are telling him, nope, no, this is how it's got to happen. He had to just be so unreasonable. Uh, but now that he's gone, you know, it's, it's you know, it's it, things change. But it's, it's a typical old story. The founder's gone or the founder basically makes enough and they sell out, which is fine. I don't mean sell it in a negative way. I mean, they... They, yeah. they they get bought out and they like it. They're like, hey, they built their dream. Now another uh, group takes over the company. They buy it, and now it's about the stock price. And right, look right. at the food and the, and look how it affects food. That's what I'm thinking is. So when people are listening to this discussion, they think this seems to be about food. It's like, yeah, but now look, we're kind of hooking it around to the real. This is business, and look how business affected our health nationwide and worldwide. Yeah. Just because they're allowed to do it, and w can we outlaw it, or what's the solution to that? To once you get to a business know, size, long. yeah, once you get to a large enough you gotta size, educate the people, you got to educate the people. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's and, and like the businesses everybody, everybody's... and the business. So yeah. that, I mean, to refine that question real quick is when you get to that size, and now you do have to manage the stock price because the price of the stock does matter. But how yeah. do you balance it out so it doesn't matter so much that? the product itself and how it affects everyone else no longer matters. How do you keep that mattering as well and say, Hey, yeah, we're with the customer still matters. We're selling food, but we're going to sell good food and we're going to sell food that doesn't make them sick. And even right. if it means, you know, how can we do it without using uh high fructose corn syrup? Like, yeah. you know, or McDonald's with their ingredients or other fast foods without trying to get people so addicted. And right. you know what I mean? Like, there, 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 there must be a look way. At, yeah, look at the business that even like McDonald's and Taco Bell and Wendy's and all these businesses create. It creates an unhealthy business. It, it, well, it creates unhealthy people, which creates another business, which is healthcare, which is drugs and pills and everything else. It's like when we were growing up. Did you ever see a pill commercial for you know whatever? No, no you never saw it. No, no it's it, like. Do you remember every time you watch TV? It's like it's all about pill commercials, and it's like. Oh yeah, I can't stand really? commercials anymore. I don't even watch TV anymore because um, there's I'm just dying to turn it off. I can't right now because of my mom, but yeah. I'm dying to turn turn it off completely. It's such garbage out there. Yeah, and and, and the I'm, psychology I'm that lately. they use, they like to use the 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 you know uh, 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 the assuming that that you you know basically. They know they're 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 advertising the people that are using top level advertising and psychology, so that you say it in your head when you repeat it. It's like they assume they're saying, "Don't you feel bad when your head hurts? 
or yeah. See, your yeah. head is hurting right now. And it's like, no, my head is not hurting right now. But in my mind, I'm saying my head is not hurting. And, and they know from the deep psych- psychology that when you say my head is not hurting right now, your brain hears head hurting, head hurting. And these, there, there's actual studies on this. When you, you say the actual statement and you try to negate it, your brain right. tends to hear the statement without the, the negated part, like the, you know, no, I'm, I'm not angry. It hears angry. I'm angry. Or, you know, I'm not this. I'm not that. It doesn't seem to, you know, you, you do hear it, but it, the, the other part of the statement is more powerful. So they just keep saying it and keep saying it. And when it's on the air and you, you keep getting exposed to that advertisement so long, pretty soon you're like, when you notice that you're, you have that itch, you know, and you notice and pretty soon you start thinking about that itch and, and it keeps popping up. You're on the subway somewhere and maybe they've got an advertisement on a subway video screen or something. And then you're, you know, you're, you're at work and it pops up on YouTube and then it's on your phone. Now they're connected all this stuff and, and they know you're eventually you this, the, the power of suggestion. And I yeah. just, I just think, I wonder, is there a solution to this? I mean, there's freedom of speech, but this maybe, is... maybe long term, but not not the immediate future. No, people are people. You know, it's like I, I always think about if you didn't watch TV and you didn't have social media, and you just read like we did back in the day. You read about the information, the papers, and all that. Mm-hmm. You can you can kind of pick and choose what you want to believe, and and you know who supports it, whatever, blah blah. But it's like when you're watching TV, like I'm a perfect example. I take care of my mom. I watch daytime TV. It's garbage. It's complete garbage. It's like they, they, some pill commercial comes on TV. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, the side effects are death, you know, diarrhea, uh, loss of eyesight. But then the way they say it, it's like, oh, it's just. And the background they use and the music in the background and the yeah. scenery is yeah, so, exactly. so yeah. colorful and beautiful. You're just like, yeah, in awe. people are running around. <laughs> you know, whatever, playing games and stuff. It's like, you're talking about if I just want to like lower my blood pressure, but I might die from this or I might, whatever, something might happen. You know, I lose a leg or something. Uh, you know, they just make it look like it's no big deal. You know, it's crazy. <laughs> I know, I know, crazy. I know. I, I, know. We all, I think we should all like give up TV and, and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's. Yeah, there's something about that. That's kind of crazy. And and I think there's a response because TV is a business as well, obviously. And and I think that's that. There's some powerful. I think you know, there there are there must be people in powerful places in government and regulated that know how powerful television is on our society and the media. Oh, for sure. And I just don't know why they're not. You know, like like why they're allowed to. It's all big business. Yeah. Yeah. Why they're allowed to show all certain. Big business. Okay, for example, I can't just go out the street and just start yelling, hey, let's, you know, some horrible problem. You know, you could incite a riot or something like that, but why are you allowed to create TV shows yeah. that, that, that show scenarios and they're basically showing people how to act and to react in certain situations? That they just yeah, sitcoms yeah. through constantly showing it over and over and over. Like, for example, the power of that business of television, um, that entertainment business. Look at, look at, look. And you remember, I love Lucy. <laughs> yeah. Remember that show? Who, who was in charge and, and in, in between the husband and wife and who looked like the kind of the, the goofy kind of childlike idiot? Right, right. I mean, well, between, I'm between, assuming, well, between Ricky and Lucy. Yeah, well, it's it's a good question. It's um, well, you remember Lucy? It was Lucy. She was always yeah. I was going to say I was going to say probably Lucy. Oh yeah, I remember that. Str- you know, it, and, and and it was like that. All the shows were basically like that. You remember what was that other one? The uh, there was a couple other shows. I the honeymooners. It, yeah, and and he would just ah, he ought to, uh, yeah. It, it, the husband was basically shown as being, all in the family. Yeah, all in the family was a big one. Yeah, yeah. Like back in the seventies and eighties. Yeah, oh and, my God. and but as it got closer and closer, you get into the seventies, sixties, seventies, eighties, and all that. You get away from the "I Love Lucy." They still made Ricky Ricardo, you know, Lucy's husband. He didn't look like an idiot. He looked like a good guy, right? You know, but, oh, yeah, of course. But, but he was almost like dad like. And look how they yeah. slowly changed it. Where all of a sudden now you got home improvement, and he he you know that home improvement was so popular, and now the husband looks like the idiot, and the wife is in charge. And she's like right, she's right. like his mom, and and yeah. so they're actually affecting society on a powerful, yeah. powerful level, showing kids as we're just sitting there staring at the TV, like, oh, this is how I'm supposed to think of relationships between men and women, yeah. and friends, and businesses, exactly. and they watch business executives, and they think, 
oh, this is how you're supposed to conduct business. You need to right. be like a shark and you need to be, you know, you need to be somebody who just like, you know, uses people and is all about just nothing but money and, you know, don't leave anything on the table and, uh, no, don't leave any money on the table and all this. And then, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's this strange thing, but yeah, the powerful yeah. effect on society just, and how we perceive it. And I think, you know, when you look at a lot of good business, there's plenty of, there's, there's money still left on the table sometimes. Because yeah, if yeah. you're just trying to rake, you know, basically rape your 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 partner in business, like you know the with the business you're doing having a contract with, they're not going to want to do business with that company anymore. Right? There's right. like, yeah, we're going to get the most money and make it not beneficial to the other company. The other company is going to like, well, their whole motive is to get out of the agreement. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, beneficial agreement. So yeah, so we kind of we kind of slid over there from food, but yeah, that's these are. Uh, these are actually good discussions on that food one. That's a powerful one because I noticed something. Hey, here's a quick one for you, a quick thought, because you brought up being when we were younger. How is it that, and I, I really don't have an idea right now because I'm thinking on the fly, is the fact that we ate, look at our diet when you and I were kids. Because for yeah. our listeners that hear this now, Eric and I grew up on the same street, almost across the street from each other. It's like across the street and over like one or two houses and yeah, I mean, you know, you could throw a uh, you could throw a ball from my driveway to yours, you know, and uh, yeah, <laughs> so about, 50, about 100 feet apart. Yeah, and uh, so and you know, back then, I mean, you know, what, all the kids were playing outside. We drink out of the hoses. Yeah, and, and we drink city water. I mean, <laughs> yeah. now we know this. I used to I used to think, you know, oh, have a glass of water. I was like, it just doesn't taste that good. Now as an adult, I know why because of all the chemicals in city water. Yeah. And it's just not that great. But, uh, you know, I didn't know that as a kid, but you're drinking city water all the time. Uh, and you're drinking out of the hose in the backyard, which is disgusting. But, man, that tasted so good as a kid. And you think, why oh, is it? It's cold, yeah. Yeah, but all the, oh, you know, all the who knows what is on the inside of that hose. Well, oh, there and, was, um, but, but the thought I was going to say is, whole- real quick is, is with all that and the diet that we had, why, why, why weren't we more unhealthy? You know, t- well, today there are kids that don't drink out of the hose. They're drinking bottled water and uh, they're, they're, they're not drinking the city water. They're not drinking out of the hose out of the backyard and, and they're having all this diabetes. Is it because they're eating more yeah. fast food or what? I mean, we were, we well, were, you know, if you go back to like the breads and stuff like that and, the pop and all that, you know, bread's one of the worst things for us and they don't talk about it, but it's the truth. And it's all, it's how food um, affects our insulin levels. And when you're driving up our insulin levels, that's what creates the diabetes. And it's not necessarily sugar. It's the processed foods, everything that we eat or the majority of what we eat is processed. And um, it, it's, it's interesting once you kind of get into it, um, oh, I mean, yeah. I'm not a scientist and I'm not an expert on it, but I've read a lot about it. But, um, if you want to get back to the way we, we ate back when we were, you know, in the seventies and eighties, when we were teens and young kids, you know, a lot of it was, you know, meat and potatoes and fish and chicken and yeah. rice and all that stuff. But now everything's processed. Everything's, you know, yeah. And the, I think our, our... Are highly processed, the pops, the, any, any, all the condiments, all that kind of stuff. Look at ketchup. Ketchup's got high fructose corn syrup in it. Oh, I know. I tried Heinz to. I tried to one avoid. Of, one of I tried to avoid uh, high fructose corn syrup, and I had trouble because of that. Looking at the ketchup, I look at barbecue sauce, and I couldn't believe yeah, how much trouble it. I had finding a barbecue sauce on the shelf that didn't have high fructose corn syrup. And I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. And then you find one, and you're like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah, that's why that one isn't a dollar. 70 that one's 560 or something like that you know right so, so you're right, you're exactly. paying a premium price you know even though 560 for a bottle isn't but compared to everything else you're like oh two dollars dollar fifty this that all the if you're going to save money then you look at the ingredients and you're like oh okay yeah this is you, yeah you got, the, you got so if you, you want to eat healthy you want to buy salads and all that i mean man you're, you're going to spend some money and I, I I still think there there is a way to eat healthy, but it's now it's like I'm so spoiled, you know, that it's so difficult. One of them would just be raw food. 
and yeah, meat's expensive. That's what we're supposed but, to be eating. Yeah, like just go to the, the produce, and it's like actually there's still a lot of cheap stuff there. But you know, one thing I, which is very interesting, is if uh, if you look into like pesticides and different sprays they use on produce as well, uh, some of it actually stops the uptake of nutrients. Right. So you, because if you have a lot of nutrients in the food, your body tends to, tends to say, hey, you don't really, you don't need to be that hungry now. Now you've got the nutrients you need for healthy, you know, you know, to, to sustain you in a healthy manner. If you don't have enough protein, you don't have enough vitamins and all that your body, it's like, it's like someone who's addicted to coffee, the caffeine in the coffee. If they have, uh, 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 like an espresso or a few of those that they're, you know, a couple of small ones, but they're concentrated, you know, really with a lot of caffeine, they don't have to have much. Right. But if you have right, like really right. weak coffee, then you're like, Oh, I need to have like two or three cups of this garbage stuff. Like you're the free coffee at a dealership or something like, yeah, I need to have three of these to equal my one cup at home. Well, that's right. the, they say that's the same thing with nutrients and food is our bodies will crave it because the nutrients, this processed foods are, are so poor and so low that you're getting, like you said, just nothing but the fat and the sugar and the salt and the fillers. Yeah. yeah and you're not yeah. getting the actual nutrients. You so your body's like, okay, that was great. Just like craving the caffeine, you're like, yeah, we, we need more of the nutrients. So keep eating. Keep eating. Plus, it's addictive. So you also have the addictive side, like you mentioned, but there's that aspect on top of where your body's saying, not only are you addicted, we still need nutrients. So keep eating. And right. you know, so if you just fill it with other, you know, healthy stuff, now the healthy stuff, Man, it's just it's it's just nothing, you know. Grabbing a bunch well, of raw lettuce compared to having a double quarter pounder with cheese at McDonald's. Right. <laughs> well, it's like the other thing is it's um if you look at what we eat and the fiber content, the fiber content has been stripped out of all of our foods. So probably eighty percent of what we eat has no fiber in it. You know. Oh, and they say that like really that, and, that really slows down the sugar intake and helps with yeah, the sugar it hits levels. hits our insulin levels so quickly. Um, that's what creates part of our addiction. One of the best books to read, it's an older book, but one of the best books to read that kind of opens your eyes to what's really going on in the food industry, it's a book called um, Fast Food Nation. I think it was written like 30 years ago or something like that now. But I, I think I've heard of that. I read it. Yeah, I, I read it. It's an easy read, but it's a guy... The guy that wrote wrote the book um, was uh, was a prior um, executive in the food industry, and he basically goes and interviews a bunch of people and blah blah blah. And I for, I forgot the whole premise of the of the book exactly, but he basically goes and interviews all these people and and basically explains um, what goes on um, in our food industry, meaning that you know, they can basically, in a nutshell, they can make a hamburger taste like a strawberry and they can make a strawberry taste like a hamburger. It's that scientific. It's the scientists that are out there with the chemicals and the ingredients that basically kind of dictate, you know, yeah, uh, you know, the, the textures and the tastes and everything else. And it's crazy. And, and we're all just, you know... That, see that that's, you know that's, that's, that's coming to that. And... That's kind of scary stuff right there. When you when you take away, uh, you know, our ability to just eat what's out there in nature, that that gets scary. Well, they could fool people like like with this uh, with this push for these uh, imitation meat. That is, right. I, I've I've done some some looking at that, and it's a controversial subject. But it's I think people are getting fooled because there's. It's so unhealthy to eat that imitation stuff and to eat soy. And they're like, oh, I, I, what, what do you mean? Soy is so healthy for you. It's like, no, it is not. Uh, maybe in its natural form, but it can be processed as well. And it's just not right. natural. Like for men, for example, it's different different effect than on women. Women who are going through menopause, uh, like tofu and all that is good I, I, from what I've heard. I'm not a doctor because I don't know. Nobody, nobody take right. my expertise, but um, research it yourselves. But I, I, I've seen uh, in articles where they, they where it's mentioned that uh, um, that you know, that that has an estrogen effect, and those are kind of foods that yeah. a woman go through through a menopause might want those those extra that extra estrogen. Whereas men, it actually re- decreases your testosterone. And makes you less, right, you know, right. so increase estrogen and lowers the testosterone. Foods like that, and you think, wow. And so, and, and some of these things they have just as much fat. So you get rid of the healthiness of the meat, 
and then, you know, like of actual healthy meat. And he just put in like a bunch of fat and sugar and salt. And well, was, yeah, a bunch of fillers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a bunch of fillers. Yeah, like McDonald's. McDonald's, I think they said that the amount of actual beef in a McDonald's hamburger is like 20 or 30%. The rest Jeez. of it's fillers. Jeez, yeah. they're so Crazy. sneaky to me. And it tastes good too because it's. Yeah, it, the it, unfortunate thing is, is that. You know, we're not educated on that. Most Americans aren't educated on that and how bad fried foods are for us and how bad some of the oils are bad. You know, like, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Canola oils and stuff like that and peanut oils. They're, they're horrible for us. And people think, oh, it's peanut oil. How bad can it be? Well, if you don't understand the science, then you don't really question it. But yeah, and really cooking one of the it. best things for you. Yeah, is olive oil. Yeah, and olive cooking is it. one of the best things for us. But. Yeah, and, and the temperature you reach, it's like, you know, now olive oil is good, but you can't yeah. cook it too hot, I guess. If it gets too hot, it, yeah. could, it, yeah. it, could, it could damage it. But, uh, yeah, that's one thing uh, um, about meat. I got surprised uh, in hearing the idea that if you eat meat that was that, that comes from an animal that is that eats what it was intended to eat in nature – then it, it, it like say beef that is from grass fed actual grass fed cows uh that are yeah. that are say you know free range whatever you'd call it you know they're they're eating what cows yeah. would naturally eat which is mainly just the grass and they're not fed anything else that's uh like you know some of the big companies feed them um that the effect on your body is different than mainly grain fed beef so that like there mm-hmm. there's, there's a different uh, the actual meat itself once it's digested in your system, I've heard uh, that's so people could they could verify it and look it up. Something about the the pH balance of your blood. Uh, there's acidic and there's uh, there's there's non-acidic foods or that, but really it, whether they're acidic or not, it's it's how like milk would be considered acidic, which you know when you when you look at milk, right. it's not acidic in itself. That's like a base, right? That that's something. Lemon juice is acidic, but they mean after digestion, how it affects your pH balance of your blood. So after you go through digestion right. and it gets in, it has an effect of like an acidic effect and contributing to the acidic pH balance in your blood. And a lot of these things cause huge problems in our in our coronary system. They're saying like uh, if it's if it's too acidic, I mean, just a slight change in the pH balance can kill someone. Like, I mean, just a slight, it's like your temperature. If you, if your temperature goes up by one degree, you're not feeling good at all. You're go up by three degrees and you're going to do, you know, you're brain damage and you get your temperature uh, right, hundred, right. 103 degrees. So like your pH balance of your blood has to be at a certain level. If it changes just slightly, things start going off and they're saying that that might be some of the reason that you're having issues inside the arteries and your, you know, your, your blood vessels and your body's trying to protect itself and maybe trying to, and one of the theories I heard was that maybe cholesterol is saying, Hey, we're going to patch up all these horrible areas because it, it might cause you to die from clogging it up, but at least you'll die later rather than right now by having your blood leak out. You know, or something like strange like that, where there, there's some real science that these companies know, and we as like say non scientists, the ordinary people aren't, we don't know about this, and we're just consuming this stuff, and you know, we're wondering why why is it that farmers, you know, a hundred years ago could just eat pork and beef and bacon and you know eggs and potatoes and they and and one doctor said he, he was a uh, like a heart specialist, he said, and he's this old doctor. He said back then it was somewhere where uh, I can't remember what year he was mentioning, but the book itself or the article was already old enough as it was. And he was mentioning he had 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 a uh, maybe but one patient in his practice that had a heart attack. Right. And he right. said it's so common these days. And he said, and they were eating just bacon. And, and it wasn't that he said people say, oh, well, they exercise all the time. They're working on the farm. That was the excuse. From like you know, like the food industry, where it's like, well, they're working on the farm. They're burning the stuff up. It's like, no, no, they're realizing it's not that. They don't have all these additives. The animals were raised to eat what they normally typically eat. I mean, it goes from all that. They weren't spraying all this stuff on the foods. And and so they're just eating their, right. their garden foods and a bunch of fat foods. They said their bodies knew how to deal with bacon fat, beef fat, and all that. And then they worked out, and they worked hard as well, you know, doing their job. So, yeah, they, they, they weren't perfectly in shape, but, they man, their internal health was a lot better. And like you're saying with the processed food, so yeah, that's a that's a powerful thing. And what a shame! It's like I hope somebody can come up with a sustainable way to have processed food that you can distribute to the masses that is actually healthy. And maybe there's a yeah, way I'm, to do you that. Know, there, 
there's a there's doc. I'm I'm drawing a blank here for some reason, but there's a um a documentary about uh water in our in our water systems, and there's a byproduct that comes from water or from steel. And what what's the byproduct that comes from steel they they dump into our waters? Oh, I don't know if you're. Oh, I'm, I'm completely. Yeah, not you, mercury. You'll, you'll know the name at once. It's not mercury. It's like not arsenic. It's um. Oh, God, I feel so uh, dumb. Cadmium. It, um, it, it's let me, let me Google it. Something that was it byproduct. Something that's of yeah. There's something um steel when you, when you go production. Get your teeth, you know, when you get your teeth cleaned, they use steel slag. Dang it. Um, there's a byproduct when they make steel, uh, and they there was they didn't know what to do with it. Silicates and oxides. So they started, I'm looking at. And I'll think of it in a second. Um, well, Gerald Ford is from Michigan. He's from Grand Rapids, and he's obviously one of our presidents. He was the one that allowed this byproduct to go into our water, and it's um. It's what um what do we te- what do we, what do we te- clean our teeth with? When we oh, teeth fluoride. Clean. You're talking about fluoride. Um, draw- yeah, fluoride. Yeah, fluoride. Yeah. So fluoride is a byproduct of the manufacturing of steel. Apparently. Oh it's, yeah. It, it's renamed. And there's a whole documentary about fluoride in our water. It's been taught to us over the years that fluoride is supposed to be excellent for our teeth. Oh yeah. And in reality, it's horrible. Yeah, and actually, Gerald Ford, our our past president, is responsible for that. And you know where the trick is? I, fluoride I, into the water. Yeah, and you know what? I, I did some research on that because of my, my kids, and uh, I, I caught it online, and I decided to do my own research because I, I love looking at, like, nutrition and whatnot. But that is interesting. You know, yeah. we don't, one of the key tricky things I found was is that they, they – oh, when people get into the discussion, they say, oh, no, there is evidence that uh, – because especially my, my 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 parents, you know, while my dad passed, we have my mom, their generation, they're like, well, we saw the difference. We saw when they started putting right. fluoride in the water that you know people's teeth started. You, you did. They were telling me you weren't there. You know, it started to change and all that. But uh, you know, these experts now, they they were uh, kind of whistleblowing. They they were saying that you said actually in their laboratory, like in their studies, they did show that. Um, putting uh, fluoride topical treatments on the teeth from the outside, there was a help. There was yeah. health. It was, it, it showed it was able to help, but in taking, but it, consuming it, there's never been any, they, they, those studies didn't cover consuming it. They just made you, right. they just right. allowed you to think it, Oh, it's good for your teeth. Let's put it in the water. It's like, no, all the studies that showed anything positive were from, remember that, that old fluoride they'd put, like they come to the schools and like, yeah. like trying for fluoride treatment. They put that gooey pink stuff and, yeah. and it was just weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you'd, like you'd dip your teeth uh, in it. It's like, it. So that's what they would yeah, do. And it it's like, like Topical treatment, they showed, yeah, there was some evidence for it, but they they, they were saying in the studies, there were none there. So they're just leaving that part. It's like they lie through omission by leaving it out and saying there never was proof. Yeah. And here's the th- yeah. tricky. Fluoride is so small, they were saying in some of these reports I was reading, something about uh, that the you know, it, it as a molecule is so small that it slips through most uh, most filters. So, really? so if, if you get a Brita filter or a typical carbon or oh, a, right, a, right. a charcoal filter filtration, I think, uh, I, yeah. I, I, if I'm correct, I may be wrong, but uh, something to research is is what type of filters uh, can filter out uh, um, fluoride. So it slips through. So one of the best things I found was, um, uh, was um, what do you call it, uh, um, steam uh, distilled? Dist- distilled, distilled water. But... This, yeah. the distilled water itself it, you have like chlorine in the water uh chlorine and there's some yeah. other um uh chemicals in there that have that their boiling point is is that it's lower than water or equivalent or similar to water so that when it starts boiling that stuff also goes up into the water itself but they said the good news is that right. those elements typically can be filtered up with a simple charcoal filter. So they said if you distill the if you filter if you distill the water, then filter it with a simple filter, you should be really good. Uh so well, this is, there's some this machines is the problem though. Well some machines they said have right. you, you filter it first, then you steam distill it, then you filter it again. But they said some of the filters actually put stuff in in the water itself, so you gotta be careful. 
So there's reverse osmosis as well. Uh, but reverse osmosis, I think it, it's so small. I think it does remove fluoride, and you can get that. Uh, it was like a cheap instead of buying your own steam distiller, you can go to like Walmart, and they have a machine, yeah. and some grocery stores, and you can buy the stuff for like forty cents a gallon, and just just bring your own jug type of thing and read it and look at it. it'll yeah. show like reverse yeah. osmosis, charcoal, ultraviolet light, all this stuff, and you're like, hey, that's they, they're saying that's actually better quality water than the bottled water you're getting because. When they put, uh, like, you could have a spring water, and spring water, just to kind of finish this up, is saying, this really got me, as they said, watch out, because spring water can have fluoride in it, because it has, it, it could be a naturally occurring substance in the ground, in, in a spring. This is also a problem, this is, this is the problem that we have, this is the problem they don't talk about, is that the water that we drink comes from a lot, of, so... The way I understand it, and if there's anybody out there that can correct me on this, please do. But um, everything that we dispose in our um, sinks or toilets or whatever um, gets um, processed in a processing plant, right? Mm -hmm. Then it gets redistributed out to as, as drinking water. But one thing that like the charcoal filters and all these other filters, reverse osmosis and all that, that don't take into consideration is all the drugs. Yeah. That's all the drugs that are getting dumped into our drinking water, um, the filters that we have don't remove those drugs yeah. from our drinking water. And that's one thing nobody talks about. And, you mm -hmm. know, it's like all the preservatives, all the steroids, all the whatever. I mean, go on and on and on. Yeah. What but filters that? from our drinking water. Yeah, the know? reverse the reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis does get rid of that. I was when I, at least when the articles I was reading, when you distill the water properly, it gets rid of it. Uh and the reverse osmosis oh, okay. gets rid of that. Yeah, that stuff uh steam or the distillation gets rid of almost everything because it's it's like you know right. pure. But then you filter it. So if you if you did rever if you did filtration you know, it's distillation and reverse osmosis, like you did all that afterward. I mean, it, a combination of them uh, so that after you distill it, then you also have another filtration. You test the water. It should be so clean that they there there are actually some people coming out, and, like in an industry, saying, oh, my God, you can't do that because it's so clean, it'll suck the nutrients right out of your body as it passes right, through. Right, They're like, it's right, so yeah. bad for you. It's so. And then they had another article. This guy was uh, disclaiming. He was... Uh, um, someone who was in the science field is saying, trying to refute that, say, no, it's a lie from that industry. And, and it's not true. If you drink purified water, they said the amount of the, the, the nutrients you get in it, like minerals and water is so small. It's almost ineffective in your body. They said, you get eat, right, the modern right. minerals. They just, they said, just eat some fruit and you'll get way more. He's like, don't rely on minerals in your water just because some, some you know scientists said, "Oh, if you have pure, pure, pure distilled and filtered clean water, there's yeah. nothing in it. Because of the laws of osmosis, it'll draw the nutrients from your body." He went through this or this or this. I mean, they're really trying to mess with people's heads. And he, he went through this argument saying, "No, it, it maybe if the nutrients are are right there, free flowing, but most of these nutrients are bonded with the cells in your body. It's not going to pull it out of your tissues." And right. So, right, so right. All, all I can say is that you know, me not being an expert is, is oh, I see. There's another really intelligent argument to the other side, but for some reason. Why did the this science industry not want people to have this distilled water that they were showing that when you drink it, it, it doesn't add more negative, uh, you know, ingredients in your body, and it actually yeah. makes you feel yeah. good. So I did an experiment, and I realized, you know, the, the times that I like, I would drink like a little bit of beer, and I'd, I'd feel a little uh, you know, on a weekend, I'd feel a little hungover in the morning. I drink that really clean water. Oh my god, I felt great much faster. And without right, drinking, right, the same thing, right. I started to notice a big difference. Now, my wife came from China, and she started drinking. Now, she can't drink the other water. She's drinking the purified water yeah. more, and she just she feels more energetic. It's like it does. It's like it actually quenches your thirst. And you drink it, you just feel a little bit brighter. It's, it's, it's so strange. Then you, then you go back and drink some sink water, and you're like, God, I feel like I drank out of the pool. Yeah. Like I swallowed water in a no, pool. No, I know. I'm... <laughs> I'm on a on Facebook. I'm on a lot of the um, raw vegan diets and and stuff like that, just for like recipes and stuff like that. But they, you know, basically the whole premise is that <clears throat> what they talk about is the more healthy you eat, the less unhealthy you want to eat. In other words, 
let's say if you're eating all raw foods and you're drinking clean water and um, you're eating uh, good meats and stuff and vegetables, fruits, nuts, all that kind of stuff. When you go to, when you go back to the way you used to eat, let's say fast food or whatever, it makes you sick. You know, it makes you sick to your stomach. It makes you feel horrible. Yeah. But what happened, my whole, my whole point is, is that I think we're a society where we're used to eating so bad and we're used to eating, you know, we're used to feeling so bad that we think this is the norm. And reality is if we get off what we eat and eat healthy and eat clean, it's going to make you feel a lot better. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, you know ever, Sam? Yeah. Do you know who Letty Kravitz is? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the musician. Look up. Uh, yeah. Look, I've seen him a few times in concert. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. Perfect. Look up online say Lenny Kravitz uh, on Google, Lenny Kravitz diet. I just happened to hear this on like a, a blog somewhere. And, um, he, uh, what does he say? He has a garden. Um, he says, what a great blessing. A great blessing of living here in the Bahamas is that I get to grow my own food. And Kravitz says, yeah. so I have a, I yeah. have a, a breed right now. I says, so I have a garden where most of the food comes from. As you can see, I'm vegan and primarily raw. And they show a picture of him at 58 with his shirt off. Yeah. And he looks like he's like 25. And he says yeah, yeah. during that time he was eating almost all raw, so it's not just vegan; it's raw. Yeah. Uh, so it, I've I've seen a bunch of documentaries on that kind of stuff. People that went like vegan or raw in their fifties and now they're in their eighties, they look like fifty years old still. They don't have the wrinkles. They don't have you know the 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 whatever. Oh yeah. You know it's crazy, and I, I just think that. You know, I, I, I was reading something about how life has changed so much in the last hundred years and they went from, and this is going to sound kind of funny. I'm just, I'm just kind of thinking off the top of my head, but everything's gone from small chairs and small kitchens to huge kitchens and comfortable couches and TV. And we're all getting in, in a, in a sense, like more lazy and more, like we don't want to cook. We don't. We want to make. We want our. We want to make our lifestyle as easy as possible. But in return, we're eating more bad food. Where there's, you know, you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, Does yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, and, and how from a business point. So here's one one thing that I I heard a nutritionist speaking on. It was uh, okay. The quality of nutrients, how they you know they they deteriorate within say produce. And you've got food like you've got yeah. apples or you've got celery or anything like that in produce. So as they said, once you once you pick it, of course, it, it begins to deteriorate. Yeah. And you pick it off the right. vine or whatever it's growing from its plant, its source. Yeah. So you got time going from picking, say, an apple. Pick it off the tree, and they and then you got the time until it actually gets to the grocery store. So a lot of stores like to pick it right before it's completely ripe so it, it hopefully will ripen at the right time at the store, you know. And they're right. trying to make it look pretty and all that. So, you know, with the dying things and all that weird stuff they're doing to make people, the produce last or look viable longer. But they said, uh, so they said the most optimal nutrition you get is when, of course, you have food that's grown, like I say, an apple that's grown in an orchard where the soil is good. And you got nice, happy, right. healthy apple tree, right? Well, they said the best thing is you go outside, you go pick the apple, bring it inside. And then cut it up and eat it right then is like the best you could get. Right. Or your garden right, is outside right. and you got squash, you know, you got broccoli and stuff. Like that. So you, you, you pick it for that, that, that day and very, the very best would be for that meal. You just go, it's a catch and fish, you know, fresh fish, catch it yep. and gut it right yeah. there and cook it is like going to be the best. So the same thing they said with the nutrients on that, they don't deteriorate, but it's so hard the way we live. We don't have a garden with us all the time. Where you know you go to right. work and you, you come home, we don't have gardens out back. So, and then the pastor living in the country, well, someone was there to uh, to take care. I mean, there was the uh, they make it look like someone you know, like a housewife or something, or someone is at home, like oh, it's such a horrible thing. But man, they that person whoever stayed home was making sure the whole family. Now we know, like the, for this discussion, per this discussion, making sure these the, those kids and people were growing up actually healthy with a strong immune system because yeah. they're managing all that work and the produce and the food and the cleanliness and the preparation of the food. And, and you think, wow, so how do you eat that way? They said, well, uh, the next step would be if you can't pick it right there, they said flash frozen foods 
tend to have more of the nutrients in it than if you picked it fresh and then you go buy it at the produce at the store. So like blueberries that have been frozen, they said a lot of times they flash freeze them. It's still going to lose, yeah. but they said because they know they're going to flash freeze them, they don't pick it till it's it's actually ripe. So it's at its yeah yeah its prime state. Then they flash freeze it, and they said if you can't go out and pick it yourself and eat it right then, that is almost usually better than the the blueberries you buy at a store because of the time it's going to transit and sit in there on the shelf. And uh, so other foods that flat like vegetables that are frozen. A lot of times, if they're flash frozen in a proper way, might have more of the nutrients in them. So it depends on the company. But I thought, wow, okay, that's a good thing to know because some of those are are pretty cheap, you know, frozen veggies. But yeah, one, one still of the, doesn't one of the feel right. That though I've read is that if you, yeah, like like you said, if you're not picking the fruit from the day that it's ripe, the second best is flash frozen. But it's not that it's great for you, but yeah. it's the second best. That kind of sucks, doesn't it? It's, yeah, it's like how yeah, could you? How yeah. could you? So, how do you create a business that can sell healthy food without the diminishment of all the nutrients in it, and get it out to a lot of well, people? It's like maybe it's like you Europe, can't. You know, you, I don't. You you go to Europe and they still have all the markets and people like if you go to let's say if you go to Europe, oh, this is what I've heard. I've never been to Europe, but if you go to Europe, a lot of the refrigerators are small. Because most of the people that eat in Europe pick their, they go to the market and pick their food the day they want to eat. Whereas in America, we have huge refrigerators and freezers and we buy mass quantities of food and it sits in our refrigerator. Therefore, it loses nutritional value, blah, 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 blah. So it's kind of the way that we look at food. You know, it's like if, if you went out every day to the farmer's market and picked what you want to eat for that day, it's probably a hell of a lot better for you than going to like a Kroger's or whatever else Wow! and, yeah. and picking something that's been there for a week, you know? God, yeah. Can, can I, no, you get, bring an idea to my mind. Can you imagine maybe someone will use this idea if they hear the podcast and they're, they're going to start a business somewhere or they, or they already have a big business and they can do it right now. Wouldn't that be nice? You know, when you see these companies that have a lot of profit and, 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 and some of like, like say Google, for example, they have this creative place where you got food, you know, they, they say you've got yeah. like a, a cafeteria and you can, you, I think you can eat for free at some companies like that, or they're real progressive, yeah. I guess yeah. they say, Ooh, progressive, I guess like that's a, a, a miracle thing that's to do. A term. But, uh, <laughs> <All right. laughs> but I think, wouldn't that be interesting if, if uh, you develop a company where, you actually just bring in food and you just, you know, part of the profit, if you're making a healthy profit and you can, you just feed your employees. It's like you have a buffet or you just have yeah. like, you, yeah. and you have it now. What about a step further is, is a company that can afford to actually grow their own food out back and, and, and use those profits so that their, their employees are healthier. I don't know how impossible that would be, but wouldn't that be amazing if somebody could come up with a way at a company? Yeah, like your farm to table kind of thing. Yeah, they're like, like so that way. Farm, it's transferred right to the table. And that way it's, it's right there for lunch. They're like, hey, if you want, here it is. You don't have to go out and buy lunch. You have fresh stuff and, and you got a you know kitchen staff. They're cooking it. So it's it's literally picked that day. And, uh, you know, they find a way to, you know, just make use of the waste or, you know, they, you know, like stores do uh, when, yeah. when they fry chicken and then they, they, if they, if people don't buy the rotisserie, they put it in the fridge and you go know, here, you can buy a cold yeah. rotisserie chicken or the, you know, the, they, they make use out of the ingredients and yeah. Okay. So this is the, uh, this is, uh, and they just label it, but you'd have a, you'd have this company that would make healthy food and say, Hey, at least if you come to work here, you got good benefits and you can have one meal a day. It's like, all vegan and non-vegan. It's like the meat is, yeah, that, that'd be, yeah. that'd be expensive, but, uh, geez, I mean, if they had, if they had a little farm down yeah. the road, you know, you think of it, it's like if they had a farm down the road, I don't know. That'd be interesting. I wonder, I wonder if that'd be possible. Raise yeah. their own chickens. Well, you know, I, I always thought is if they taught us about food, you know, when we were young in the schools and they taught us about what we're supposed to eat and how we're not supposed to eat, that maybe this wouldn't be an issue, but I think, there's so many people that are misinformed about, you know, how good food is for us or how bad food is for us. People just eat whatever. It's like going back to McDonald's. I mean, could you imagine going to McDonald's twice a day and eating their food, how bad you would feel? 
Oh yeah. You know, but people get used to that. Like, oh, I it's did. Like, I did. It's just the way I am. I know? did. I did it when I when like, I when I was crazy. in a truck driving. When, remember, I, I I've been doing truck driving very long. When I was in training, that's yeah. what it was like. We had to eat. There was no fridge in the training truck, so. It all, uh, yeah. You can't pull that semi anywhere. You could only go to truck stops or places that can pull a 53-foot trailer, you know, in, in there in right. the parking lot. And the only places are pretty much truck stops and rest stops. So where do you eat? Right. You, you got to eat, eat at truck stops. So there's, they're, they're always coupled with like a McDonald's or a Wendy's or, or a, a Taco Bell. <laughs> right, or, right. It is. It's always one of those. Or, or you're eating the food that they prepare inside. And I was starting to feel pretty horrible. I was like, wow, this is like for a whole month and a half or so that's, uh, you know, I was trying to find a way to eat healthy. I'm like, Oh my God, I was eating literally for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it was just yeah. horrible. There was yeah. no way to cook food. That's why when I got my own truck, I was like, I am, man, I was spending probably, th- you could spend like 300 bucks a week on food that way. And I was yeah. noticing yeah. the same thing you were noticing of the price of some of these, like you upscale, you know, you get a large, you know, the Wendy's double, uh, Dave's double, uh, combo. I like that. Right. You get the large fry and the large drink and all that, and you're like, "Oh my god, how much is that?" You're like, "Oh wow, that's right. you're already at like thirteen bucks or some kind of, you know." Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. So it's yeah, crazy. I was then starting to feel pretty that bad. That becomes the norm, you know. After a while, like when in a business that you're in, it becomes the norm. That's what you expect. So that's what you pay, and you know that stops you from you know preparing your own foods. But you know, it's like if you can spend the time, like when you get home and make your salads for two, three days and mason jars and cook chicken or, or something or whatever. Everybody says chicken, oh, chicken this, chicken that. But, you know, chicken, it's yard bird. I mean, it's not really, I don't think chicken's all that great for you. The, the nice thing about chicken is you can prepare it all different kinds of ways. You know, you can add chicken to pretty much anything. Oh, yeah. But in reality, what's really good for you is raw vegetables, fruits, nuts, and good meats, you know. Yeah, that's the and best eggs. thing for you, you know. And eggs, yeah, and eggs, healthy, healthy. Yeah, eggs. how many years have we been told? How many years have we been told that eggs are so bad for us? Now it's coming out um, that eggs are perfectly fine for us. Yeah, and this is the other thing I want to say is too is bef- before we end they're, they're, podcast, almost, they're almost like that, a perfect. They're almost like they, a perfect food. It, it, yeah, they talk about cholesterol and good cholesterol, and bad cholesterol, whatever, blah blah. But what they say is that the problem with cholesterol is this: is that if you eat eggs and if you eat meat and if you eat other things that have cholesterol in it, it's fine. But the problem is, is when you eat too much sugar is that it hardens our arteries and the cholesterol that's in these foods, they're designed to tumble through our arteries. So they kind of tumble like, I don't know, I'm not sure how else to explain it, but they, the, 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 the cholesterol tumbles through our arteries and it gets processed. But when we eat things with high in sugar, our arteries harden and the cholesterol doesn't tumble anymore. It gets caught in our arteries and that's what causes the heart attacks. That's what causes the problems that we have with um, strokes and all that kind of stuff. Oh, that's and pretty interesting. Anybody can correct. Yeah. Anybody can correct me. I'm not, uh, I'm not a doctor, but this is just things that I've read. It's not that red meat's that bad. But when you're eating red meat with a lot of sugar, that's bad. But they don't tell you that. They don't tell you how bad. Like if you eat anything, so, you know, there's, there's been a lot of debate and stuff about sugar and stuff, whether it's high fructose corn syrup or um, just fructose or, or regular sugar or whatever. Um, they, you know, it's not that. Sugar is that bad for us, but it's the amount of sugar that's that yeah, good, that's and it's, bad and, for us. And it's the form it's, of the sugar. It's true with anything. Yeah, yeah too much of it, Like we have to have sugar C, or we'll die. Too much vitamin C every day. Yeah, it's going to be toxic to us sooner or later. And that's what sugar is doing us to, right, to us right and now. It, it's the, yeah, it's the, too much it's the it. form that it's in and it's refined. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. It, yeah. like yeah. we'll die without it, but... Uh, well, geez, yeah. we've gone really, we've gone really, uh, over, like, like everyone <laughs> yeah. can tell we've, we really love this subject. I could keep talking about this. We could do another, we could add on, yeah, to more, it's, you know, trying to tie this into business. And it's like, that's one thing is it, it it's, you know, kind of trying to rein it in towards business because it is, I mean, it's a discussion about food, but look, you know, just to recap on it is look how powerful businesses affect our world. Because if you're busy yeah, all day, yeah. every day and, 
people think, you know, some businesses are good or, or they're bad or they're, oh, this is not good. It's like, well, one thing is true is that we don't have to eat any of it. It's like, but we're stuck with the, the dilemma. It's like, well, what else do I eat? You know, I, I, right. can, I, can I grow my own food? It's like, I'm not, you know, according to the law, wherever you live, it's like, you might not be allowed to. So it's interesting. So yeah. we have to, re- we have to rely on businesses, not only for our clothing, but our food. So yeah, that's, that's a powerful yeah. thing. So yeah, we, we, yeah, we, maybe someone could come up with, I think, I think that'll be brilliant when someone could come up with ways of, of, of getting, uh, or maybe it's just a process. Like you said, in Europe, you know, they have a way of doing things so that, you know, you get the, it's, yeah. it's, it's easier to get the fresher foods or something like that. Maybe it's yeah, just I mean, a, about it this way. If you're on the road and every place you stop is a farmer's market, it'd yeah. be a lot different, wouldn't it? Like you can, you know, chop up your vegetables and make a sauce like vegetable oil and lemon and whatever and, and eat your raw vegetables, but it's never offered. It's the uh, barbecues. It's the cheeseburgers. It's the hot dogs. Yeah, and yeah. Stuff. And it's the whatever, stuff that if nobody yeah. buys it, they can put it in the fridge and sell it the next day or just reuse exactly. it. Exactly. But you got a salad exactly. and you know how bad a salad is. Like the next day you like, you can't sell that thing. It's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which, right. which really sucks because it's so yeah. healthy. If people ate leafy green veggies like that, oh, I feel amazing when I start eating, when I, when I get to that. But my problem I've always had, and especially li- you know, living in the truck is salads. They sell them at the truck stops, but you're like, Man, it's it, it's it's a lot of money. Like, I want to buy a salad. It's literally eight dollars for a salad with yeah. a little bit of chicken and other stuff. Yeah. And then you're like, eight dollars for a salad? I'm like, oh come yeah. on! So that's supposed to add to my meal, but you know, I mean, it, so you're you're spending way too much money. So isn't it a shame that? We, we that to eat what comes from nature, we can't afford to eat what's growing yeah, outside. Yeah, well, look at it this way. <laughs> look at it this way. 100, 100, 100 years ago, right? 100 years ago, we were primarily meat, potatoes, fruits, and nuts. But today, we are so far from that. We're yeah. so far from that. You yeah. know, everything's so processed. It's crazy. It's and crazy. Business, and business brings why, it to us. Why we're so sick. Yeah, yeah. Yep, exactly. So maybe business exactly. can, can you know, maybe someone could find a way that business can bring it, because uh, that's all it is, it's a service, is how can we find a way to do it where we get it back to, like you said, you know, healthier food. I think yeah, I think people are it's trying. Lifestyle change, cultural change, you know, you got to educate everybody, you know. Yeah, I hope I hope I hope somebody listens to this and they they get inspired and they come up with a great idea and they're like we have a great idea for a fast food restaurant that actually has healthy food that's fast. <laughs> right, right. You know what I mean? Well, like I mean, this is a crazy well, well, thing. Well, here's a quick one. I'll, I'll tell you is a it, it was a, a a chain which is probably still in existence. We had one here in Knoxville. I don't know if we do anymore. It was on uh, near the college and it's not there anymore. Called Stakeout. And I just worked there okay. temp- temporarily as a driver just while I was a student, um, just a little bit. And I just, I, I, it didn't mix with my study, so I, I didn't stay long. But I noticed, I'm like, hey, that's, you know, if the business mind, like kind of like curious about business, I thought, hey, that's a good idea. You could actually have steak because they could bake but the, bake the potato. So a baked potato, that's not bad. Yeah. I mean, you no. could bake a potato and it lasts. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that's actually, yeah. you got a baked potato, you put it in there and they stay, they just wrap them in foil and that thing stays warm enough. So by the time you have an order, you just pull it out of the box where the other pre cook and you just keep cooking them. So I'm like, wow. And, and yeah. if you did have healthy steak meat, I don't know how healthy theirs was. They just cook it on the grill, like two minutes aside or something or two or three. It's as fast as a lot of other food. So it's almost, yeah. almost good, healthy food. But I thought, yeah, now that I'm thinking with this discussion, maybe there is a way with the the right types of food that don't go bad. You could actually have a fast food that like with potatoes and other things, you just pull it out. So maybe I, th- I think there are well, some, there are some, probably, someone's going to probably put in the comments, hey, check this place out or that place out. They've got really healthy food. And, you know, there's probably this is, people. This is the crazy thing. This is the crazy thing is that if you read about intermittent fasting and you oh, yeah. read about how often we're supposed to eat, if you go back again, a hundred years, we probably ate once or twice a day. Okay. Because it was almost back hunters and gatherers, right? We had steak, we had chicken, we had you know, our poultry, we had, you know, oh, yeah, vegetables, yeah. fruit, nuts, whatever. We, you know, we probably had coffee for breakfast, a small lunch, and then a, maybe a, a decent dinner. But now the way our culture has kind of progressed is that we have breakfast, lunch, and dinner plus all the snacks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. 
why is it, why is our bodies constantly craving food? Well, it wants you back into it and you realize that every time that our insulin level gets spiked, it makes us hungry. So if you could stop spiking your insulin level, it's going to make you eat less. And then once you get into, they call it intermittent fasting, but once you reduce your caloric intake or once you reduce how much that we eat, then you get into autophagy. Autophagy is where the body, um, <clears throat> and I'm not an expert, but when you fast, your body goes into autophagy or into ketosis and it rids your body of all the old, uh, like, uh, like cells and yeah, it yeah. kind of, um, it flushes your system out of all the things that it doesn't need. So it's kind of interesting. You'd have to read up about it. I'm like, I said, I'm not an expert about it, but yeah, definitely um, read up. I, I, is extremely interesting. Yeah, that is, uh, there's something about that. Cause uh, they, they, they said like, uh, nature has provided, uh, uh many cures and there, I, I, I've wanted to try it and, and I got to have the guts to do it sometime, but, uh, they said there's also a process, like it's different for everybody, the timeline, but something about like, there's, there's a kind of like a, a, a general guideline of what happens. So let's say you, you, you stop eating and you just consume water. They said without any calories right. coming in, they said after so many days, yep. this happens after so many days, that happens, you know, after it's two autophagy. weeks. Yeah. yeah. They're saying there's Ketosis a st- and autophagy. Yeah. So what they're saying is there are stages though of what the effects are, what happens. That's pretty fascinating is like they say, okay, in the very beginning, like the first stage, what happens is you begin. So if somebody does like a one week cleanse, you pretty much just cleaned out your intestines because they were saying something like, now, as I said, everyone's metabolism is different. Everyone's body, it might be like that happens in a few days for someone and they start to go into the next phase, you know, quicker than someone else and other people a little longer. So, but in a general guideline, they were like the first stage is like your intestines start to get kind of cleaned out. And then once, once that happens, it's like, I forget what the next stage is, but it's like, then your blood starts getting cleaned out and then it starts to get deeper. Yeah. But I'm saying, yeah, but I'm saying is, is there stages to that? So that's, that's, yeah, that, so that one subject that what I want to mention is that's the powerful thing is if that's autophagy, then the different stages of that are, are, when I heard this, I thought, wow, this is amazing. Cause they said, by the time you reach, you get past, I think 30 days is a number where you yep. start, you start to get to a point where now your body has, okay, clean out your intestines first. And if you stop there, you got a great cleanse of your intestines. But if you go further, yeah. then it starts to clean out your blood and which happens pretty quick because it's your blood's flowing and it's like, it's cleaned out your organs. Now your, your other organs yeah. start getting cleaned out. Now, once they, they said, and I forget the stages, but it's something like that. Then pretty soon it reaches deeper tissues and it starts to pull toxins out of deeper yeah. tissues. But they said, once you get yep. past a certain point and, and your body starts uh, getting rid of all these toxins, now it gets to a stage and this is like later on, it starts to eat parts of your body that are unnecessary, like cancer and that's growth. Autophagy. Yep. Yep. Well, that's I mean, if they, I mean, if that's autophagy, it's like, I'm just saying that's a different yep. stage of the autophagy. So like, and that, that's, yeah. that's something people should hear is like, they it, may it hear, they may about two weeks. Yeah. So I mean, like but once the stages, you go intermittent fasting. Yeah. If you go into like, they call it like rolling 72s. So if you go like if you yeah, but the point fast, I was trying to like the point I was, days. yeah the point I was just trying to make of that yeah. is 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 people if they look into it there there's also another aspect to whether it's you know the autophagy or um, intermittent fasting there there's there's another aspect to it is the length of time has uh, that process what you call it autophagy that that's called it I, I didn't know the name of it but if that's yeah, what you're saying autophagy means to eat oneself I believe if I'm not mistaken yeah so they, to okay eat, so to eat oneself. Yep. So there's a time. Okay. So then that's pretty, yeah, see, I didn't know that. Uh, um, so that's good to know. So yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah. So autophagy, that's something to look up. That's a good keyword. But so, but the thing I caught was that the, so, okay. So that process of eating oneself, it, it, the body goes in stages. And once you get to that later stage, that's where people give up. But they said it's like nature provided a reset. And if you can make it yeah. to that, like it might be 20 days for someone, it, it might be 30 days. Yeah, it might be 30 days yeah. for someone else, but it's really difficult living in our world with all this food. But you make it to that level and it starts eating up the worst of the worst in your body. But yep. if you yep. – here's a key thing is if you start to snack on something, it, it, it messes it all up. 
and your yeah, body will yeah. say, nope, nope, nope. Now we have another source for food, and now you're going to get so hungry. Even if you were hungry before, it turns on the hunger and all that. Uh, it, 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 you could get back to it pretty quick at that point, but they're saying it's better if you last it out, and then you, you get rid of all this stuff, and they've had cancers get cured. And I'm like, yeah, why, well, the why, crazy why, thing is this, why, why is aren't that they, your body why aren't they has memory. This? Your cells have memory. So if you go through autophagy for like 30 days and you get back on your regular diet, you will gain back everything that you've lost plus some because your body's trying to recompensate for what is the changes going on. It, so there's would, a science behind it. Yeah, so then you would like have let's say to. If you, let's say if you had 30 pounds to lose, right? And you did autophagy. You did your fasting, your water fast, whatever, blah, blah. You lost your 30 pounds. Oh, so yeah, you went it'll right, go right back. back to the way you're eating. Your thirty pounds would come right back on. Uh, yeah, so so you'd crazy. have to so you'd have to do yeah. the reset and then have the new yeah. diet and the new attitude. Exactly. Now, now if you mix it with the other yes. science, they're saying also your mental state of mind has to change as well, like your emotional yeah. state. Yeah. And you could actually rebuild yourself as a new person. Um, yeah. You know, and we improved it. Is but how how easy is that? How difficult? It's and, brutally tough because of addiction. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. Of foods. You know. This has been a fascinating. This it's is like an nuts. awesome discussion. Oh yeah, I can I can talk your ear off. I'm not an expert on it, but I've read <laughs> a lot about it, and yeah. it's it's crazy. We are, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to. We got We got We definitely but... got to continue this on another podcast, and because uh, yeah. maybe I'm going to do some research on that on different businesses, and maybe we can find some businesses that are actually helping with this because. You know they're out there. You know there's people who are trying to help. They're 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 trying to figure yeah. out a way to help people to eat healthier. Uh, you know to to deal with that, like to come up with you know not just to make money because once it gets you know once it becomes about the profits for the company, next thing you know it, yeah. it's not about the 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 people you it's know becoming healthier. Business. Yeah, right, it's like right. No, nope, they don't care. So yeah, once you, how do you balance that? So yeah, I'm gonna do some research on that. Maybe we could do another subject and, and like revisit this. Uh, maybe even next time. I don't know. I'm going to look and see. Maybe if yeah. you find something, uh, we'll, we'll have something that's like, hey, here's some actual businesses and look what they're doing. So maybe there'll be something really cool we'll find out. Like someone, you know, because yeah. they're not, they're not going to show it on the mainstream news, most likely. They just show the same old garbage. No. No. So maybe there's some fascinating yeah, exactly. stuff. Yeah, the, the, there's some science out there that's basically not the science of changing the food, but saying, hey, here's here's a way that you can eat the way you were meant to eat. It's just the science is in the way to get it to you or something like that, right. you know, or to preserve it. So it's, 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 it's better than, it, than fat, way better than fast food and almost as good as going out to the garden and picking it and uh, right, eating it. Right. God, right. you're making me crave like a, this whole discussion is making me, it is just, it's just, a, just a crave going outside. Like, like a Kentucky fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but going outside and picking like fresh blueberries outside, or like remember when you find like a no, no. like a raspberry bush and you just you pick them and you like as a kid you didn't care if they were washed or not, but you just like that. The, right, the, right. You just ate them. Just the taste of that, you're like, oh, nature's goodness. So, man, okay, yeah. Well, let's do this. I'll let you wrap up your uh, podcast, and I'll, I'll talk to you during the week. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do some research, and uh, hey, if you come across anything, yeah, that we could do this again because look how long we can talk on this. Jeez. Yeah, no, exactly. We exactly. should definitely get some, uh, if we get any listeners to download this, uh, we may, we may get some responses on this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen, I'm going to hit the hay. So, um, Hey, uh, good podcast. And, yeah. uh, how about I'll talk to you in a couple of days? All right. Sounds good. Hey, Hey, thanks Eric. All Great right. Discussion. All right. Cool. All, All right. right. See you Tom. And we'll talk yep. to you here shortly. Yep. We'll talk to you soon. All, All right. right. Thanks Eric. All right. Awesome. See you. All right. All see right. you. Bye. Bye bye. All right. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining us. It was an extra long podcast. And if you remember the beginning, I was planning on making it probably shorter. But that's how it goes. An open discussion. It's just Eric and I, we we can get in a conversation like that if we're both interested in it. Oh, we're just I mean, it, I could talk on it forever. He could talk on it forever. Both of us talking on it together. Yeah, we, we it's like the hardest thing was trying to actually you know, for both of us to to bring the show to an end. And then you look, geez, this has been two hours, but we got plenty more to say about this. So we're probably going to revisit it. So thanks for listening. And uh, thanks for downloading. Um, again, this is the biz meet global podcast. Uh, again, today is uh, uh, Sunday and it is June 25th of 2023. 
And of course, if you remember, uh, a word for our sponsor, because we're a little more casual tonight, it was open discussion. We didn't stick with our, our same format, but uh, just to make sure we shout out uh, for our sponsor, and that is trademarketglobal.com. Uh, which is the marketplace, the wholesale marketplace. Uh, there may be some products on there which are not wholesale, but uh, typically is a wholesale marketplace. Fantastic. Uh, free right now uh, for suppliers to sign up and uh, check it out, please. And also in combination with that is BizMeet Global, our discussion site, which is bizmeetglobal.com. Uh, just spelled, spelled just like our podcast uh, with .com. No spaces, right? So you got B I Z and then M E E T and then G L O B A L, bizmeetglobal.com. That is the discussion site. So you heard us discuss uh, this topic tonight. Uh, you've heard us discuss different topics. Well, you go to bizmeetglobal.com and you can create your own discussions. And, uh, you know, and uh, come here to the podcast and uh, join in. Join our uh, discussion here. Listen to us talk and also join in on the uh live chat feed. So we're going to uh, end this now, finally, after two hours. But like I said, hey, we're going to come back to this subject because this, uh, this is surprising. I, I love the subject and it just goes to show you, look how powerful business is in our lives and can affect our lives from the very foods that we eat, the very clothing that we wear, the way we, we, we train, you know, we, we travel here and there, you know, the way we get to work and come home. Um, and, and, and so much more, right? This time we touched on such a, a, a very personal topic for everyone is the foods that we eat and the foods that are made available to us. And that comes through business. So businesses have a great responsibility and also great opportunities because people want good, healthy food and they want it to taste good. If your business out there and you can come up with good, truly healthy and natural food that also tastes good and it's profitable for you. There's not a lot of waste and it, it, it doesn't spoil too quickly. Hey, you're probably going to make a lot of money. And I know a lot of us consumers out here would love it. So hopefully we'll get more of that out there. So thanks again, everybody. Thanks for joining us. And, uh, Check us out again next week, uh, Sunday night, you know, uh, every Sunday night uh, at uh, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central Time. And we may have some pre recorded uh, podcasts that show up during the week. Uh, now, if uh, one last word on that is if you don't see us on Sunday night at 9, hey, check us out the next night. We may just make up for it the next night. And like I said at the beginning of the podcast, we're trying to perfect when most people want to hear this podcast live. Should it be Friday nights? Should it be Saturday nights? Or should it be Sunday nights? Or should it be like a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or any day during the week? Let us know in the comments. So, but for now, we're going to stick with Sunday nights until uh, until we uh, we hear from uh, our listeners and until we uh, we hear that there might be a better night. So, Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. Join us. Thanks, everybody, and have a great evening. This is Tommy B signing out.